Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. In our pursuit of beans for less bucks, we recently tested the number one selling impact wrench on Amazon from a borderline no-name brand. In the further quest for qualifying quandaries such as that, we felt there might be an option you can buy for minimal coin from a brand you've just might have heard of. So our plan was to show you the performance of this Greenworks cordless half inch up against the skill half inch as they were both somewhat bargain buys yet brushless, which would be a nice change from that avid power we ran and smaller for it, being borderline compact at 6.4 and 6.1 inches long. And we will show that, however once the skill showed up we noticed something right away. This guy looks awfully similar to the cobalt half inch we tested, like damn near exactly, just in red clothing. And looking at the specs, they are rated for the same power and they're both 6.1 inches long, way nearly identically, and yes, you guessed it, made by the same folks. Both Skill and Cobalt are owned by Shervon, who makes Flex and Ego as well. Yet, the Skill is 20 volt, working on the Skill 20 volt power core platform, and the Cobalt is 24 volt. And while Makita has done a good job recently of displaying to us the difference between 18 and 36 or 40 volt max, when we tested their XGT versus their LXT line, we can't think of too many opportunities from effectively the same brand of measuring 18 or 20 volt max tools versus a 24 volt one. We've long been curious ourselves, and maybe you too, how much brands like Milwaukee are being held back by their precious 18 volt architecture. I mean, their tools have lived towards the top of most of our rank charts, but could they be even that much better as 24 volt tools like the Cobalt and Flex competition? Are brands like Flex really at that much of an advantage out the gate with 24 volts that they don't really need to try as hard to be M18? Today we have somewhat of a representative chance to imply if so and by if so how much. Then at the end we'll apply that percentage difference to a Milwaukee dyno curve and see what that would look like. And well yeah, test this green works as well to see if it can beat the cobalt or skill. Alright guys, torque from the future now. Having had a chance to use these tools for a couple weeks, one of them has now bit the dust, so stay tuned till the end for that update. Coming off recently testing Skill's 12 volt right angle impact driver and finding it to be basically the only one for sale right now worth a damn power wise, we wanted to give this skill a shot before diving into no name brands you guys have been suggesting from the Amazon bargain basement section. So let's get into some testing. We're of course going to be using the 5 amp hour pack that came on this skill. The 4 amp hour ultimate output battery for the Cobalt which we used uses larger 21700 cells, but as we found with Milwaukee CP 3.0, DeWalt's 4.0 Compact and Rigid's Octane Battery 3.0, they perform about identically with 2P configured 18650 cell packs in the 4 to 6 amp hour size, so it should be roughly comparable. Here's skill in a 5 second forward test called Working Torque. One hundred and thirty five not very interesting by itself, but let's see how an extra cell in series for more voltage on effectively the same tool looks like on that dyno graph. One hundred and forty eight or almost ten percent up, not looking huge here quite yet though, it's early days. Now for the budget greenworks, the only battery option we could get with this one was a 2 amp hour, but let's see how it does nonetheless. 113, pretty low. The only impacts to have scored less than that are on our compact impact list, and that's the fake wish and rigid subcompact. Let's jump into our max torque test though, reverse is usually where things get done around here, so here's the skill taking on the cobalt. 100. A cool 200 from the cobalt and a lower 172 from the skill, so now cresting that 16% difference here. And here's how the Greenworks does. One seventy seven, so passing up the skill now on this one, interesting. Our last test before heading to the ranking, 
and applying what we've learned to a theoretical 24 volt Milwaukee is a test called best case scenario. Here's the skill versus the equally torque rated 24 volt cobalt. Two twenty over one eighty eight, so maintaining that sixteen to seventeen percent difference again. And here's the green works. Two twenty three. That Greenworks doesn't have a ton of dynamic torque out the gate, but it builds over time to eventually surpass or basically match the Cobalt, both tools being 24 volt. It really prefers reverse. And with a 2 amp hour battery, I mean not bad for what we expected and how things started out. Here's how the rank chart thinks of things though. Rocking 6.1 and 6.3 inches in length, these tools get unfortunately grouped into mid torques despite living in that sort of no man's land and in between compact and mid torques like the Cobalt. Their power runs are turned into points as 11, 18, and 22, and 14, 17, and 19. Not super long, but also not super powerful. Their foot pounds per inch are 34.8 and 30.8. The Greenworks advertised 300 and only managed 223 of that, 74%. The skill maintains the usually pretty accurate torque ratings from Shervon and gets 94%. Sold bare, the Greenworks is usually around 76 bucks, and the skill is 99, though it's hard to find bare anymore. That's a high 44 and a meh 28.5, which totals 203.8 and 203.3, putting these well yeah at the bottom of the mid torque chart where they already are. The Greenworks can make as much power as a Cobalt, which is cool, but the Cobalt as is isn't exactly our number one pick for an impact of this size. And even on a compact list, yeah, near the bottom, they would be there too. So can't say we wholeheartedly recommend either of these. There's just too many other good options out there that do what these try to do better for not piles more cash. And torque from the future here again. A few weeks of use removed, and that was a pretty accurate recommendation as the skill has stopped working altogether. All of a sudden, that sort of speaks for itself. All right, back to the show. But luckily, that's not all we had to learn today with the data we've accumulated across the runs, as in from each second, not just multiplying everything by 1.6 or 16%, we can theorize what a Milwaukee high torque would look like as a, let's say, M24 rather than an M18. Now we're not saying 24 volt tools all have this much advantage, or that skill and cobalt represent the maxed out tech capacity of each of their respective voltages, so not really a great comparison, but here's what it would look like. 910 foot pounds. That would be enough to take the top spot in forms of power on our channel above those million dollar snap on and Matco guns. Of course, that's assuming the hammer mechanism and other components in the gun are not already maxed out, so to speak. And Milwaukee threw as much money and time developing M24 as they have with M18. But yeah, theoretically, it could be as much as this much left on the table. Hopefully, with their new 36 volt mower they're making, they're sort of seeing the light with that higher voltage. Now don't go assuming that 24 volt or even 36 to 40 volt tools are automatically more powerful just because of this grade school multiplier table we've made. Not everyone has the resources of TTI. A 350 volt Tesla Plaid might be a 80 volt Porsche Taycan just because they spent the time to figure out how. So if you're wandering the hardware store aisles seeing a 740 foot pound rated 24 volt impact wrench, and a 1,000 foot-pound rated 18 volt tool, don't try to come up with your own little math formula to figure out which would actually be more powerful. Just look up some real-world testing out there on YouTube or heck, even our Ugga Dugga factory if you're that desperate. Thanks for watching.